Are you also tapping your foot waiting for more info about when the second season of Behind Our Eyes will come out? We believe the next part will change absolutely everything, and we want to share our thoughts with you. Make sure you stick around as today, we will cover why Behind Our Eyes Season 2 will change everything. Make sure you watch until the end to get the whole picture of our reasoning behind it. But before we dive deep into this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. From the very beginning, there have been many bizarre coincidences. For example, the circumstances on which Louise got to know David, the fact that he just so happened to be working in her office, or how she bumped into Adele, with whom she instantly clicked. Serendipity or what? Next up, from the onset, we've been hand-fed toxic relationships. We have to emotionally adjust to our remarkable volt face on the characters, as we simply don't know whom to trust. The lack of information and constant deception creates a sense of delusion. Season 2 will have to deliver all that again. In skeptics' eyes, there might not be another season, because the series is based on a novel by author Sarah Pinborough. Netflix went through the entirety of the book's content, which pretty much makes Behind Her Eyes a standalone series. Why do we think otherwise? Well, it does not necessarily necessarily have to tip the scales because the first season exhausted the book's offering. There's one famous example of a limited series based on a book that returned for a second season. Of course, we're talking about Big Little Lies. It was an enormous success, which created a ripple effect across the globe, so producers had to hit the ground running as the world was hungry for more. Do you think Behind Her Eyes will blaze a trail because of its striking ending no one ever saw coming? The thing is, is that Big Little Lies incident did not become a precedent for other shows, though. It deviated from the norm, but we can't say that it paved the the way for other series to continue, just because the first season that was an adaptation hit the nail on the head. Limited series has become a big part of Netflix's portfolio. It's easier to produce something if you've already got a final product to base it on. That's why book adaptations are so popular these days. Whereas, if you have to create a decent output from scratch, it requires many resources, let alone the time to produce something creative. Don't you think, plus, new shows tend to bring in good subscriber numbers compared to letting existing shows run for multiple seasons? Pinch myself and say, I am awake. Look at my hands, count my fingers, stay calm. <sighs> Next, we really want to immerse ourselves in the heinous finale. Keep watching to find out how Behind Her Eyes will stretch its wings and potentially make us develop even more trust issues than what we had after season one. The shocking and controversial body switching ending was a softer, I know right, version than what the plot offers in the source text. The original ending, spoiler alert, reveals Rob and the body of Luis plotting to murder Luis's son so he does not share his suspicions and in turn, sell him out. In all likelihood, this could form the back of season two. but. Wouldn't this premise be too dark even for a groundbreaking platform like Netflix? The public might not condone a plot that portrays a mother plotting to murder her own son. This might cross the boundaries, but is this the precise reason Behind Her Eyes Season 2 will change everything about over-the-top television and film content platforms? I made a friend. His name's Rob. He's very funny. We laugh at all the other people together. He's helping me, I think. I think we help each other. Rob is not exactly a family guy. Neither does he want to pick up the task of upbringing Adam after his deceased mother. Adam blots the landscape of a future life with David filled with sunshine, roses, and chocolates. As we've witnessed, Rob will go to any length to keep a hold of David. He could pie Adam off in one way or another, or he could arrange a different, more creative solution to the problem of Luis's son. But either way, both approaches involve child trauma, which is a no-go in television productions. It's fair enough if adults go through living hell. However, a child's innocence seems to be one thing we are still approaching cautiously, or trying to even protect. Is there really nothing better than a child's laughter? Let's head to the next issue of repetition. We are bound to witness an emotional chasm, only deepening between Rob and David. That would be a striking resemblance to the storyline of the first chapter. Following the same trend in the second season would yield less narrative power, and many viewers may likely lose interest from the onset. The thing is that there really is no other way to let the cracks show but through the use of repetition, because Rob is not the woman that David fell in love with. Knowing that Rob is pulling the strings sets the bar very high for any future events to beat it. We expect deception and a false sense of security, but how do you match that if the head spinning detail was already exposed? Going one greater feels like an impossible task, unless you're ready to take the bull by its horns, by which we mean potentially alienating the viewers by going down the route of taking care of Adam. 
Eric Richter Strand was confronted about the sudden drop at the end of the series, which did not overlap with the book's actual ending. He summed it up as Rob's idyllic projection, with, in the book, it goes even further. It sort of says, here I am with the man of my dreams, he's married me, and now we're off to our new adventures. But then there's this kid. She looks at him and is like, well, you know what they say, accidents happen to children all the time. Drops the mics and walks off. The director further explained, that's a really bleak, hard, gut punch of an ending that can really get you angry. I think it did for a lot of people, even though it's clever, it's also really horrifying. We tried in the show to find the right balance of leaving the audience gut punched, but not like, oh my god, what's going to happen? That's the most sinister possible continuation of the plot the producers could take on board. But will the public jump on the bandwagon? Fans do not seem to popularize this idea, so it is tough to judge whether the director would run with this idea. The other more appropriate focus could be the future events and the unfolding of the newlywed Rob in Luis's body and David. It is all well that Rob looks like the woman that David fell for, but the reality is far from the truth. You can only keep up the appearances up to a point, and over time, the cracks will inevitably start to show. Also, knowing David's tendencies to deal with romantic relationship problems, what will he get up to this time? Will he come to the conclusion that he is, in fact, unhappy after all? He got with someone who's not who they claim to be, find himself attracted to someone else who will then fall victim to Rob, or will the poor and lost soul finally meet its maker? If you do not have any warm feelings for David, though, you can call him a jerk instead of showing him empathy. Next up, we want to flip the coin. We think that it's David who's the victim here. Rob's self-entitlement and victim consciousness led him to eventually claiming Adele's body. You know how they say love at first sight, right? It's one look at Adele's fiancé David for Rob to realize that he wanted what they had. Why, not just his version of their love-filled life together with someone else, but the very thing itself and what happened then. Well, we now know he took it without even blinking his eye. Scary, isn't it? So, what happens now? Rob got pretty savvy with his lucid dreaming skills and inhabiting other people's bodies. Will the rest of the story be about his endeavors to keep anyone who threatens his utopic life with David at bay? Frankly speaking, without the element of surprise, this show could appear rather unoriginal and ultimately lose its ingenuity. That's one thing we certainly want less of. Whilst we're waiting for the events to unfold, why don't we all lose ourselves in some hardcore daydreaming? It tickles you a little but leaves you unsatiated and craving for me. The power of the unseen is so much more potent, and Luis's nervous smile is the cherry on top of the cake. Put your hand up if you binge watched behind her eyes. Me too! Having to twiddle our thumbs for a bit longer to find out what's going on with season 2. Netflix has yet to confirm a possible season 2. What do you make of all this? Could the concept of astral projection be the determining factor for how behind her eyes season 2 will change everything? It would massively deviate from the main plot, still nonetheless, it would make a good backbone for the series to continue. Or will the gruesome and utterly wicked storyline of taking Adam out, the groundbreaking idea that will change the show forever? Make sure you let us know in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button and see you in the next video. May this ring remind you always of the love I feel for you. I can see why you love him, by the way. He's kind of perfect, isn't he? <laughs> All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you.